it's joyful. And it all depends on how you use this gift. If you use it in fantasy, it's going to be awful. If you use it constructively to get an inspired idea that lights up your passion, it will bless you. It will drive you. Drive you. You'll hardly be able to keep up with it. I do have one more I have to tell you about. But I need you to put on your funny bone. Everybody got one? 99.5. Is that just about everybody? We'd have to assess everybody in this room to find one who doesn't fit. 99.5% of you avoid structure. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be disciplined with what you want to do. It's when your broker says, this is how we're going to do it from now on. And you're going, like heck. That doesn't work for me. 90% of you are resisting authority in general. Somewhere along the line, someone tried to control your life, and you said, if I ever get out of this, I will never let anybody else do this again. And here you are in another one of those situations. I know if you're a certain out of balance there, you'll be thinking it, and if you're a little bit more, you've probably already spoken it. Thank you. Get you in trouble. And... 97% of you are effortless thinkers. That's a nice way of saying obsessive. What do you do to shut off your mind? I was speaking in Utah, the Grand American, a guy in the back said, I drink! The most common answer is I sleep. What do you do to shut off your mind? Sleep? Sometimes exercise, music, but something. Now here's the risk. We're thinking obsessively. we got an idea. We feel strongly about it. Somebody disagrees with us. Now what? Do we have any husband and wives here sitting next to one another? This is about the time we see somebody's ribs get cracked. You have a need to be right? It's the shadow side of the gift of effortless thinking. It's a tremendous gift if it's managed. But if it's not, you get to be right... And the other person not only gets to be wrong, but 95% of the time they get to have their self-esteem crushed. That's the price to be right. It better be important. And you know this is true because you've had the shoe reversed. You felt strongly when somebody in a position of authority said no. It's part of the reason why you're entrepreneurs. You don't want to be in that situation. Many of you have worked for a corporation where you had a hierarchical management. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you do. Some of you have intentionally avoided this. But you know what it's like to have a great idea and have somebody summarily crush your idea. It is personal. Just know it is. Just learn how to manage it. Let's go to the next slide, please. For most of us, we need a coach. I have a coach. There's a place I want to go. I'm not yet there. The word coach comes from the word KOC. It's a city in Austria where they used to build carriages for the aristocracy. Coaches. Coaches carry us. A coach has stepped in the glue buckets. <laughs> a coach has broken their ankle in a few of those holes. They're, they might only be a few miles ahead, but they know how to traverse the wilds you want to cover. And in the area of intentional creation, I can tell you there's hardly anybody I know more qualified than Scott. Former vice president of Compact. He broke his leg in life, if you will. He knows what you're struggling with and how to serve you in carrying you over that space. You want a coach. So measurement. You want to know? Do you want to know what's happening? That glass wall? Let Scott put some spray paint on it for you. So you know it's there. Then let him share with you the time-tested principles and practices and processes for breaking through it because what you want's on the other side. And you're making it too hard. 
Success takes work, but it doesn't need to be so hard. We make it hard because of our thought processes. Let him share those with you. Let him serve you as a coach. And one more slide. And bring this to the table. Passion-driven action. Action's great. But it's hard to sustain if passion isn't attached to it. I loved it when Bob said that this morning. Passion. Lee said passion. Passion means a willingness to suffer for something we love. We've got a vision. We'll work without counting the cost or tracking the time to create it. We'll do whatever is required, whatever is required, to bring that vision into tangible reality. Isn't that a beautiful concept? So you're a choice. I want to end with a couple of Og's words, if I may. Talking about how unique each one of you are, he says, there's a flame that burns within me, passed down from generations uncounted. And its heat is a constant irritation to my soul to be better than I am. And I will be. I will fan these flames of dissatisfaction and proclaim my uniqueness to the world. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Yes. I'm here for a purpose. You are. You're here for a purpose. And that purpose is to grow into a mountain, not to shrink to a grain of sand. Henceforth. I will take all of my efforts and become the highest mountain of all. And I'll work until they cry for mercy. I hunger for success. Do you hunger? Thirst for happiness and peace of mind. Lest I act, I will perish in a life of failure, misery, and sleepless nights. Anybody having any of those? Then one of my favorite lines in all the scrolls, I will command, I, not my thought processes, I'm going to take back charge. I will command and I will obey my own command. I will act now. And the words with which he started the scroll in the name of my book, today I begin a new life. March 14th, write it down in the book. March 14th, 2014, I begin a new life. Today. I shed my old skin, which had too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Anybody felt like that baseball bat of life had just taken a few swings? And my birthplace is a vineyard where there is fruit for all. It is courageous to take on our lives. It's a tragedy if we don't. Because the day is going to come when you're looking back and you're ready to pass on. And that is not the time for a regret. And any time between now and then is never too late. You're not set in your ways. You've just got habits of thinking. Let's find out where they are. Let's root them out. Let's create a freedom at a whole new level so that you can more effectively serve others. If you chase money, it runs. You know that. You can run fast enough to tackle it and beat the crap out of it. I tried that once. But I found a much easier way. If you will learn to serve and create value in the lives of people, money will flow. Invest it wisely, and it will grow. May we become servants, contributors to society. Let us not take, let us serve. It's a privilege to be with you. I want to thank Bob and Burl and Bubba. Bubba and I were talking once and he said, you know, some people tell me I should use a different name. I said, oh, Bubba, never change your name. Would you agree with me? Isn't that awesome? Bubba and Brent. It's a privilege to be here and to be a part of this. Thank you. Ramon and I are going to stick around the rest of the week. So if there's anything I can do, conversation, serve with you, ask a question, be happy to do my best to answer it. I want to be here and serve you. Excited to be a part of Wavefire and, and this organization, which gets it. Get it. May we all. Thanks, everyone.